Hello, back again. Our statement today reads, An uncharged conducting sphere of radius A is coated with a thick insulating shell, dielectric constant epsilon r, out to radius B. This object is now placed in an otherwise uniform electric field E0. Find the electric field in the insulator. This should look familiar. We just had a question about a similar setup, but with the cylinder. All right, so things to know for this problem, the potentials for all the regions on the inside at zero. In the middle, it uh, has both coefficients. And on the outside, it has the uh, external field component plus only the outside component or outside coefficient BL due to the fact that R will bring this whole term down to zero, which is a physical condition of the potential. Um, these are subject to the boundary conditions V out equal V uh, middle or medium. Uh, and then the normal derivatives are equal and in between is zero. So you should be familiar with how to solve these types of problems. Uh, applying the boundary conditions yields us equation one. Set the two potentials equal to each other um, in, that re in those respective regions. The normal derivatives are equal to one another. Uh, note that epsilon is equal to epsilon r, epsilon naught, so both the epsilon naught terms cancel. Um, and then 3 shows us that since the middle region has to equal 0, AL, uh, capital AL times AL plus BL bar over AL plus 1 equals 0. Therefore, B bar L equals negative A 2L plus 1 times capital AL. Going back to our trusty friend, orthogonality, we know that cosine theta is equal to P1 of cosine theta, the Lagrange polynomials. And so we'll have two cases to consider, L not equal to one and L equal to one. For the case where L does not equal one, we can modify equation one and two as such, but all that, that proves is that AL, capital AL and capital BL equals zero. Um, as you can see, cancellation, substitutions, only way that that's possible for these two equations to be uh, consistent is if AL and BL both equal zero, which then makes sense based on what we know from uh, a couple questions ago in the Lagrange polynomials. Uh, so moving forward, for the case of L equal one, we substitute that in and we see that all the Lagrange polynomial terms, P1, cancel out with one another. A uh, couple L terms, note that for BL, we substituted in what we found from the original round of boundary conditions. Um, so we substitute that in, we put one in wherever we see an L, and we're left with this expression down at the very bottom. B1 minus E0 B3 equals A1 times B cubed minus A cubed. Again, we're just concerned with what's going on inside that uh, region highlighted in the question. So then applying this to equation two and simplifying down, we yield another equation with the uh, external field term and a capital B term. Uh, since we don't really need B, we can eliminate that by adding the two equations together as such, where we multiply equation one by two and add that to equation two. We do that so that the B terms will cancel, leaving us with an easy algebraic equation to solve. And sure enough, we are left with A equals this fraction of negative 3 E naught divided by 2 times 1 minus A over B cubed plus the dielectric constant times 1 plus 2 uh, multiplied by A over B cubed as well. Uh, just be careful with the algebra. It does get tedious after a while and the minus signs and the L's and all that things can get scrambled together. Uh, just write out all your steps. Take your time and your setup. Um, we're not done yet though, this is only the coefficient, so now we need to substitute that coefficient into the potential term for our region, but let's recall that in the medium we had an AL term and a BL term, but we found what that BL term was so in terms of AL, so we substitute that in first, plug in one for all the L's that we have, and then we can plug, we can factor out an A1 term and plug in the A1 term we just found on the previous slide. And uh, we know that P1 is equal to cosine theta, so we can all take that down. 
Uh, however, we know that the electric field is equal to the negative gradient, so we need to find that. That constant term out front has nothing to do with R, so it just stays put. Um, and also remember that with the spherical coordinate system we have, we have two unit vector directions, um, R hat and theta hat. So we can use the formula from the front cover of the book and take the derivatives with R as such.